Good morning, this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with a review of the weekend trading reports for October 31st, 2015. We have a market that is in sideways normal. On an annual basis using weekly RSI 14, we are at the higher end of neutral at a score of 57 out of 100. On a short-term basis using the 10-day NDX, we are slightly overbought at 81 out of 100. Looking at the market mosaic, Price relative to the 200-day moving average is yellow sideways at 1.61%, so just on the boundary of getting back into bull. Slope of the 50 has moved into the positive at uh, green bullish, 0.15%. ADX 14 is uh, neutral with respect to uh, strength of trend at 23.1%. The risk index is the 30 period moving average of the VIX divided by the 10. The boundary between risk on and risk off is 1.0. The current reading is at 1.22. That puts us well into risk on. The Z score uh, allows us to compute the risk Z, which is uh, comparing that score of 1.224, comparing it to the last 5,000 trading days, finding the average and standard deviation. That gives us a risk Z of 2.54. Here you can see a 90-day histogram of that reading, and we've been holding here around 2.54 uh, for the last week or so. Uh, that's at an extreme condition. A slight increase here in volatility would not be abnormal because we've uh, extended to such a nice um, distance away from the zero line. This move from minus 4 sigma to almost plus 3 sigma uh, corresponds with about a 25% move in XIV, the inverse volatility, so that's why I like looking at this indicator and knowing where we are inside the daily volatility regime. Uh, Monday we will rebalance with blended monthly rebalancing. Uh, these are the current holdings here. We've been in defensive mode for two months uh, and now it looks like um, there's room to start uh, re-entering uh, the market here based on ETF 13, 22, and 32. You can see the winners uh, using that lens inside the Dow 30, the ETF 200, and ETF Max. In ETF 2, the theoretical exposure is at 60%. The model portfolio will be at 60%. Just a quick look at the blended monthly rebalancing portfolios here, the ETF 13 and the ETF 32. You can see that we've got a mixed bag as far as um, the blended uh, performance numbers are. And the... Um, in the ETF 32, the sector spiders for di consumer discretionary technology, uh, real estate, and staples are, are dominating. I think these are the old reliables, the large cap conservative stocks that are making money, uh, a good place to start conservatively re-entering uh, the market in those, uh, in those areas. ETF Max shows the uh, uh, leading candidates using the same lens, but from among a uh, population of about 1,100 ETFs. And the S&P 500 listing here. What I like to look for are those that are in either red or green in the one week percentage. Uh, they're still on the leading, uh, among the leading candidates. Uh, then if it's green, like Expedia, then there's some short-term momentum that there may be some follow-through. So EXPE will be on my short list, as will uh, O'Reilly, Gannett, uh, First Solar showing some remarkable strength here, and uh, and Masco. And then uh, I don't see any in the red here, although Cablevision will be of interest because it's green on the long term. It's uh, been a one-month loser relative to these other leading candidates and has been flat for a couple, couple three or four weeks here. So uh, there's a few value plays, um, but I'm really interested in the continued momentum here on those that are green all the way across the board. This is the uh, uh, market health check. Uh, the vertical blue lines are 10, 20, and 30 days worth of look back. This is in symbol SPY. The horizontal purple lines are price targets that have acted as uh, resistance before and are acting as magnets pulling this price northward. You can see that we're up here now back up to around 209, aiming at 212 after a double bottom down here around 180, uh, I'm sorry, 198 or 188, excuse me. Um, the uh, horizontal red lines are support levels that have held in the past, and those would be price targets on the way down if we should see another 
collapse like we did the last time we were at uh, around uh, uh, 209 ish um, price is in the outer uh, bands of the uh, floodplain here so we're in the light blue area uh, above the 200 day moving average and we're out here in around Z plus 1.5 out here in the floodplain this would be a natural place for the market to pause and consolidate after a nice run up here from uh, 188 to 209 that's about a 10 percent bounce recovery see the uh, the blue channel lines are the 10 period regression line and uh, RAF regression channel. Uh, the outer blue lines represent the max excursion from the regression line during the move. And then um, it's almost an overlay with the uh, 30 period regression channel. Uh, both are comfortably up. In fact, the steepness of this 30 period regression channel is really uh, already quite strong. It's up around 0.6. You can see that this sine wave here is the slope of that 30. The blue dots are where it has crossed the zero line and went between positive and negative. This was the previous um, swing high of that indicator and the swing low. This was so steeply down that it was uh, around minus 0.7 when normally a minus 0.22 is considered uh, steep down. So it's this has been quite an oscillation from positive down to minus 0.7 and now all the way up to um, uh, point, uh, looks like uh, 0.6. So this has been an extended favorable move right here. And now that we're out in the floodplain, a reversion to the Bollinger Band mean would be absolutely normal. So that's the downside target. But you can see we've got some important uh, support levels here with the Dragon outside of the river. We got the PSAR uh, just on the edge of the uh, river. So this is a market that's at, a, uh, at an inflection point. Is this just the recovery that gets us back to where we were that discounts the sell-off? Or is this leg one of the next leg up? If we can get through 212 here, then there's another $10 on the far side of this, uh, just on a technical basis. If this fails, then, then the next expected move would be reversion back to 200. So I'm prepared to go in either direction on this one as the market begins to uh, continues to unfold. So uh, short-term holdings, short-term time horizon, taking advantage of profit opportunities when we have them to lock them in. Let's continue to get paid. The market has been over uh, bought here for about uh, 20 days, and you can see that the jaws of percent price op oscillator remain open to the upside, but this has been quite a long run here. And again, a, a tactical pause would not be unusual. In the ETF to uh, regional report, um, uh, you can see that we've got um, three uh, symbols on a buy, seven on, this should read 30 and 70, not 30 and 40, sorry, it's a misprint. Um, we're in sideways normal. The S&P at 68 is better than the globals at 59, so the U.S. continues to lead the way. Inside the U.S., the strength is in large caps, or tech at 73, large caps 68, mid cap 63 and small cap 60. Two strongest sectors are tech and U.S. large. Two weakest remains uh, Latin America and uh, Asia less Japan. Um, inside the sector spiders, right now it's technology and consumer discretion. There's still been this uh, um, pullback here in XLV, the uh, healthcare, which had had, had a great run. Uh, maybe this is discounting a Hillary presidency and, uh, and damage to the large pharmaceuticals, I don't know, but I'll continue to watch that. The economics of it are just too good to ignore, so we'll keep an eye on pharmaceuticals and healthcare. Uh, world market uh, model here, uh, we've got everything in the U.S. above average except for small cap blended. Uh, large cap growth, that's the, that's the cues, uh, is exceptionally strong. Gold and silver are exceptionally strong. Uh, real estate, corporate bonds, and treasuries, the alternate asset classes are still doing well. Everything Asia is weak, less uh, China and South Korea. And uh, Latin America and Brazil really suffering, but Mexico uh, is above average. Uh, everything Europe is mildly below average with the exception of Belgium, Austria, and France. Uh, ETF top 30, no surprises, still uh, quite a lot of um, interest generating ETFs here, but starting to see things creep back in, um, like uh, real estate, dividend equities, uh, emerging markets, sovereign debt, South Korea, and here's the sector spiders for uh, consumer staples. 
and the Consumer Discretionary Spider XLY. Uh, the Dow 30 uh, has shifted back towards U.S. large caps here and returned a uh, you know, flight to quality, if you will. Um, whereas this was dominated two or three months ago by financials, now we're seeing kind of the old reliable producers like Nike, McDonald's, Intel, Microsoft, GE, Home Depot. Uh, Travelers is a new one to the, to the list. Um, uh, IBM and Walmart still suffering down here. Um, I like uh, Apple and uh, Chevron. They are, they are white and yellow, meaning that they are now above average on the shorter term in strength. And uh, that's, that's, there's still room for them to grow. Uh, DuPont has made a really nice turnaround being green and yellow and Travelers, Green and White, and then you have this whole stack, Coke, 3M, Boeing, ExxonMobil, Johnson & Johnson, and Cisco, all with the green and white. So plenty to choose from here as the new leaders emerge. Looking, I'm looking for more momentum in Nike, McDonald's, Intel. Uh, ETF liquidity, just showing the relative uh, intraday volatility uh, and as a function of daily dollars, average daily dollars. Shift into the uh, daily report for Monday. No signals in overreaction or channeling. Uh, there's a 5DD in GE, 551W in Chevron, a, um, a short side frame in overreaction for Merck. I would be uh, careful to see it starting to fail while the market is failing before I get on that. And then I would be much more inclined to make that a one day uh, target than looking for the swing trade. General Electric is the only one in the single digits here on RSI2. Uh, inside the, the tactical ETFs, uh, ETF30 tactical summary, uh, 5DD in Asia Less Japan, we got four 551Ws. We have, a, have three that are less than 10 here on the RSI2 signal. Uh, a couple frog quality numbers greater than, greater than three. Uh, and then a half a dozen or so that auto frame better than two to one. Lots to choose from in here. Uh, auto framers and the regression line fractal framework for you to consider. Uh, these on the in the green, the top shelf are the ones that are the most ATRs below their own RL270, and that would be uh, deep value plays. And then the ones in the red are where the current relative strength are. These are the ones that are most numbers of ATRs above their long-term fair value. Again, we're using RL270 as the proxy for long-term fair value. So uh, things like DuPont, Microsoft, Intel are ahead of their fair value, while Walmart, IBM are below. These are the daily squeezes. These are the ones that um, uh, Friday's price was compressed to a fraction of its average range, at least 0.7 of the average range. You can see in many cases it's only half size of their average range, so they were compressed, kind of in a holding pattern. And then when we take the range stat and divide it by the appropriate risk, in, most, in all the cases here it's range risk, we still have a one day favorable pop that's better than two to one. And so anytime any of these uh, take out their high of the day from Friday, then I'm inclined to believe that uh, the market has started to expand from that compression uh, condition, and uh, this is the size of the move that they can expect and the reward to risk that I'm, that I'm betting on. Uh, and then just a few uh, more indicators from the market mosaic. You can see the slope of the 30 period regression line, how strong that has become going from, uh, compared to the last 180 days anyway, um, from a more than minus two sigma up to more than positive two sigma. That's been an extraordinary move. Uh, that's corresponded with this move here. And no sign of that relenting. And then the percent stretch, that's price relative to its own 200-day moving average, has come from almost minus 3 sigma uh, all the way back up to the long-term average and now is positive. It's slightly above the, uh, the zero line. That represents the uh, price relative to the 200 there. Um, this has been uh, quite a uh, remarkable rebound from something that was the third steepest down, one, two, three, in the last 10 years, and is now among, was the second steepest up. So that tells you the, the, uh, the volatility shift and why it's so important to see these moves. When you get these crossovers of the slope of the 30 crossing its own 10 period regression line, that tells you that there's a 
quite a large potential of a regime change in volatility. And this, like I said, corresponded with a 25% move in um, the XIV uh, inverse um, uh, ETF. And you can see ATR divided by price, the S&P's volatility uh, has uh, come back to darn near uh, quietude after this uh, sharp spike up like 40 days ago. So in my view, these are really important indicators to help you get the intermediate term uh, tidal conditions right. This has been very helpful to me this past couple months. Just flashing through some of the uh, the deep statistics here. I'm not going to comment on those. You can pause the tape if you need to. Uh, I like all of these moves inside here for the swing. Um, you can see the uh, the price with respect to the river, the double bottom, and now the reversal, and then now the river has turned back up. And you can see how the slope of the 30 has become really powerful. Uh, the 10 has been oscillating, but now the, the 90 itself has rolled over and is coming back just to the edge of normal. This is very favorable for the next excursion up if we can get through 212. And I think you'll see a relief rally there. Again, just some frog stats for you. And that's everything I want to cover. I'm keeping my wrist measured and my powder dry. I'm looking for some key leaders in the U.S. large caps. Uh, I'm playing it uh, one day at a time. I'm willing to start uh, using markets money to leave some positions on for swing trade time frames. Uh, but I'm going to be careful to use uh, markets money that was earned intraday in order to fund that risk. I uh, still got to remember that we are very close to the 200-day moving average. And even though we've had a nice bounce up, uh, this is a market that is not in a hurry and uh, is facing the same challenges to break out to new highs as it did two months ago when we saw this uh, sharp uh, collapse in, in prices. So uh, I'm going to keep it. Uh, we're just going to be careful and emphasize the shorter term time horizons now more than ever. So this is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital. Keep your wrist measured and your powder dry.